is up guys? For this video, we're going to try and dial some things in on the Dakota now that it is running and driving again. I've got some issues that I need to cover, but first let me show you guys some stuff that I did off camera after last time you guys saw me. So, first one, we got a bumper on the back which covers all the uh, stuff in the rear here and uh, looks pretty nice. I still haven't gotten the license plate lights in, I still have to do that, but bumpers all the way in my plate has a home now which is great so we got that done I've gone through probably a solid 20 or 25 or so gallons of fuel through this thing already uh, between the tune being way too rich and wasting fuel and you know testing it out and everything driving to work and back and stuff so at least the injectors have been cycled through all the old E85 from last year has definitely been flushed out of it which is good uh, inside Nothing has changed at all. My lizard flew over here though. He needs to go back up here. There. Alright. But nothing has changed in here. All these gauges are working. This cheapo tachometer from eBay at $20 I spent on it. Well worth it. I really like that. That's probably going to be permanent in here. Um, as I mentioned at the end of the last video, we've got gauges to put here and here. And eventually we'll be putting my fuel gauge right there. But I don't have anywhere to get it in there yet. So... Let me set the camera down, I'll get the hood propped, and I'll show you guys what I did in there as well. And then we'll get into working on this thing and fixing some of the issues I've come across. Alright, so as I mentioned in the last video as well, pulled the top off this gate and cut the spring down. So now instead of making 15 pounds of boost and over boosting, we're making about 7, which is perfect. We got an air filter on here, so we're all protected. And... This belt is still squeaking like crazy even after all the driving, which is obnoxious, but I guess that is what it is. And uh, yeah, that pretty much covers everything I did. Not a whole lot, mostly tuning and adjusting stuff on the tune, but everything else has been doing great. We had the overboosting issue, we're having the cutting out issue with the uh, ignition, and that is it. So, we're going to take this guy right here he's going to be coming out we are going to be putting that super coil in and i'm also going to be upgrading the gauge of wire powering both the mallory which is sitting in the cab and running to the coil as well from the mallory ignition so we're going to be overhauling that and then of course putting the bigger coil on here let me show you guys in case you weren't here when i installed this box it's underneath of the dashboard uh, all the way up there so it's an old high fire I am running a CDI box so I should have plenty of power from that thing for this amount of uh, cylinder pressure and everything I'm doing so I think I just need to uh, get a bigger coil on there maybe upgrade the wire gauge and then we will be all set so that's what we're going to do and first up of course is going to be to get that old one off which won't be hard I'm also running a really big MSD coil wire running from the coil to the distributor so I know that my issue isn't coming from that but I've never been super happy with how this thing's mounted the brackets are kind of floppy so let me get the bigger coil in here it looks like it will fit up in this area just gonna take up a little bit more space uh, but yeah let's uh Get this guy pulled off of here and uh, begin installing the new super coil. I'm gonna probably just mount it right up on the firewall like that. The brackets are back here. Stick it straight on the firewall. Coil wires there. Power wires are there. That's it. So this thing, the way this thing looks, I mean, look at its comparison to the to the cup it's sitting next to. That's a big ass coil. The way this thing looks reminds me of those giant uh, disposable flashlight batteries that just between its size and the color and everything, if you guys know what I'm talking about, maybe this this will remind you of that too. But it looks like the like those industrial flashlight batteries that you used to see all the time before everything switched to lithium and rechargeable stuff. That's just what this thing reminds me of because my grandparents used to have one that always sat by their in their kitchen for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, we got all that. How many stickers they get? Look at that. Any sticker? I will go on the hood. I have a bunch of stickers to put on the hood that I haven't added yet because I was waiting for the hood to return back to the truck so that's where those will go but uh, yeah let's uh, we'll get the old coil off we'll get this one on we'll run some wires and uh, then I think we're gonna try and put these gauges on as well afterwards before we go and drive somewhere but 
let's uh let's get this on there all right we got the new coil in hanging out right there I ended up changing out this main wire to the one that came with my distributor because the uh, MSD one didn't reach the terminal inside of that coil so I changed that out got that in it is dark out so you guys won't be able to see anything um, it's just gonna be one test drive to see if this has eliminated the breakup or not and I'm gonna come back and I might start working on the gauges tonight. I might wait till tomorrow now that it's pitch black outside. It's kind of hard to see everything. Uh, so we'll see, but I wanna go out, test drive it right now, see if I have fixed this issue before it gets any later. It's dark out, but it's not super late. It's just, you know, I don't know, what is it, 8.30? I'd rather do this now uh, than do it later. So um, yeah, coils in, cleaned up some wires, got that thicker power wire, ran to everything. Test drive it, see if, uh, the breaking up is gone or if I've got some more work and some more chasing down to do so I'm gonna go do that I'll come back I'll let you guys know how that goes and then depending on how long I'm out we uh, will start putting some of these gauges in because I can get the water temp and the voltage gauge in right now the fuel level gauge has to wait until I get a panel but I can put at least two of those in so uh, let's go see how this thing drives well I would call that a mission success that thing is not spitting or popping or breaking up at all anymore it actually cranked up and fired up faster than it has in a long time. That's faster than it has even since having the V6 in it. It's actually pretty impressive. It sounds to me like it's idling cleaner and smoother. It sounds a lot sharper. I think that old Blaster 2 coil might be more, more worn out than I thought it was wherever it's sitting. I don't even remember where I put it. But yeah, running better. The breaking up is gone. It needed a new coil. so. I'm glad it was that simple. Uh, oh yeah, there's the old, there's the old blaster right there. So I don't know that blaster might still be good to use on just a regular old street vehicle, like something old that doesn't make a lot of power. But wasn't doing so hot on that thing anymore. So now that that issue is fixed, we've got the new coil in. Everything is done there. I want to get a water temp gauge in this thing and get the voltage in there just so I can monitor all of you know the engine systems all at once. Uh, not having the water temperature gauge is definitely not ideal right now because I can't tell if it's warmed all the way up and I can't tell if it's overheating so uh, I think that's where we're gonna start uh, which one of these which one's this that's the voltage gauge I'll be putting that one into tonight because that's easy there's the water temp so it is pitch black outside as you can see so I'm going to go ahead and get these gauges in. I'll uh, show you guys what it looks like all done. And uh, might be it for this video. I don't know. I mean, we fixed the breaking up issue. I want to take you guys out for a ride in this thing sometime in this video. But I don't know if it's going to happen. Maybe we'll just make this a short kind of a real quick thing. Getting some of the gauges and a few things finished up on it. Okay, we are going to need this. And this. Taking those with me and taking this radiator cap with me. Uh, last night, after getting the water temperature gauge in, decided I was going to go and drive out and meet up with a buddy of mine, help him with his project, right? So I left the house about halfway. I'm, I've been on the highway for maybe 10 minutes at this point, maybe a little less. I start smelling coolant. So I'm like, that's weird. And to make the situation even weirder, shortly after I left the house, the LED bulb that I swapped into the temperature gauge that I had just installed because I like running LEDs and all the lights because they don't get hot, they don't turn all the faces yellow and everything. It slowly started getting dimmer and dimmer until it totally stopped. So I'm like, alright, I just installed the temp gauge and now I can't see it because it's dark out and the lights stop working, right? Well, I still grab my, my phone and I turn the flashlight on and I shine it at the temp gauge and it is higher than usual. It's sitting at about 185 degrees. So I'm like, alright, maybe we've got an issue here. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, maybe the temperature sensor that I put in is leaking. That might be where the smell's coming from. And that would explain why it was reading a little bit of a high temperature than usual. It could have been a little air pocket there or something. But as I continued driving, the temp kept slowly creeping up. It wasn't just all of a sudden jumping up, but it got up to, you know, 190 and then 195. And at this point, I was probably a little bit past halfway between where the house is at and where I work. And at work, I keep one of my vehicles at work locked up in our little storage area. Got up to about 200 degrees now, and I'm like, man, I gotta get 
I gotta get in there, I gotta get in there, shut this thing down before it gets any higher. So, I get to the shop, I'm parked in front of our gate, I pop the hood, and the radiator cap is missing. It's not on the truck. So, there is coolant, has sprayed all over everything. Uh, I don't know what happened. I removed the radiator cap when I put the temp sensor in because the system was a little bit pressurized from me driving it previously to putting the sensor in because I you know, drove it after putting the ignition coil on and then came in and did the sensor, right? So, but I remember putting the cap back on because I struggled to get both the tabs to lock in because the aftermarket radiator has real thick, like a real thick lip on it. So I know I put it back on. So either I didn't get it all the way put back on or this was the last straw for that cap and it decided uh, after being removed so many times that it just wanted to explode because there is no evidence of it anywhere. It is gone. So now we get to uh, drive back up to the shop, put some antifreeze in the truck. Hopefully I have enough there to fill it. If not, I'll have to wait till uh, we can get back to the shop and get more. Luckily I made it, was able to get in the Mustang, drive that back to house last night, and uh, now we can run back and uh, get some coolant in there. I'm gonna swap out the bulb, the backlight in that gauge. And we'll bring it back, hopefully drama free, and uh, we'll continue what we started yesterday and maybe get everything finished up. Uh, so yeah, let's run back. Let's get that thing. Also, I kinda wanna stop at Jags because my OCD is kicking in now. I wanna stop at Jags and get a mechanical oil pressure gauge to match the coolant temperature gauge and the voltage gauge I'm gonna have in there. Uh, so we'll see about that. but. For now, let's worry about getting up to the shop, getting coolant in this thing, and uh, getting it back to the house so I can work on it, and hopefully there's no more issues. All right, let's get up there and uh, see if we can get that thing back here to the house and continue working on it today. All right, well, here we are. Cap's not on her. This is exactly how I parked it yesterday. You can see some of the coolant still dripping off of the hood up here. Got a bit of a... A mess to clean up down here, but there's a new coil covering you know, antifreeze and other things. So uh, let's fill this thing up and uh, get this thing back to the house so we can finish what we started yesterday. All right, we got it running. I'm gonna let it warm up and get that thermostat to crack open. Make sure there's no big air pockets in the block before I go drive, and uh, then we'll put the radiator cap on it, top it off, and uh, I'm gonna try to get a different bulb in this thing. And then we'll get her back to the house. Good news is, with all the coolant all over the belt, it stopped squeaking. back together or steady holding temperature I lost about a gallon and a half of coolant there was an air pocket in the engine once the thermostat opened the level in the radiator dropped pretty hard so that would explain why it was getting a little warm but not absolutely pegging itself out um, I guess we just drive it back to the house it's running good enough I'm gonna risk it and try driving to Jags in this because it's literally on the way back to the house and I get an oil pressure gauge to match this thing. And I just noticed at the back, the uh, the two LED bulbs that I put in the license plate lights also died. So I don't know what it is. I've used a few of those Chinese bulbs before and they didn't fail, but all of those have died. So, and the one that is in this gauge right here is still working and it's a different bulb. So it's nothing to do with the electrical system on the truck. I don't really know what's going on there, but we'll probably get some uh, some Sylvania LEDs to put in there, solve that issue. It's only going to be four of them, so I guess that's what we're going to do, but I want to stop at Jeg's, get
at that oil pressure gauge and then I want to run to AutoZone and get uh, some ring terminals so I can get the voltage gauge in here as well. And I want to see if JX has a boost gauge. That'd be kind of cool if they do. I don't, I don't think I'm going to put one in yet, but it'd be neat to see if they do so I can get one in the future and have all matching gauges in here. So let's get out of here. Let's get all the errands done and then uh, let's get back to the house and get this over with. All right, it's been a few days, but I was able to get everything finished up in here in the interior for the gauges. And I got a shift boot in here, so there's no longer a hole in the floor. So here's what we've got. Move the tachometer over here. That oil pressure and coolant temp right there. And then I put my volt gauge here. So the only gauge I didn't install is the uh, fuel level gauge, and I still have to make something to mount it to in here. I want to 3D print some sort of plate that goes here. I'll put the fuel level gauge there, these switches will be slid up together a little tighter and uh, that'll go there. And then eventually I want to make another plate that goes across the back here and then these gauges will sit further in and then I want to get indicators for the high beam and for the turn signals on there. Um, but that'll be for the future. For now this works perfect. I can see these just fine. I put matching blue LEDs in all these gauges so everything lights up blue in here with the exception of the uh, the wideband so it keeps my uh, OCD in check just a little bit there you know the radio and the tack and then all these backlights and all these gauges the boost gauge and everything they're all blue so everything matches and then the wideband is red but eh, that's alright that's fine um, but we're all done in here and then of course we got the shift boot down here so if you go on eBay and look up universal shifter boot these things come up for like 20 bucks they're like a Hearst style uh, worked perfect for covering the hole in the floor the plate that comes with it fits like crap around the boot. Uh, you can see there it's poking up the left side and then it's just, it's, it's a cheap piece of crap, but it works. It covered the hole up, kept all that noise and all the exhaust fumes from coming in the floor. At some point I want to put some sort of center console in here and put that around it, put an actual shift boot in here that kind of comes up to the top of the shifter here. And then I want to have some sort of some here for storage, kind of like I used to have a couple years ago before I, you know, shifted the cap around and the one I had no longer fit. Uh, but for now, this works, covers the hole, makes it way more drivable. It's so much quieter in here with that thing covered up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This video was all over the place. Uh, we got a little bit of work done here and there. We uh, went on a little rescue mission after the radiator cap exploded. So, uh, yeah, I've been driving it quite a few times to work and back. Just cruising. We've got a, a little bit of a surprise video come up that I didn't plan on making. The turbo seals have given up on this thing. We'll get into more on that later in the video. I don't think it's the turbo's fault. I think it's probably more my fault than anything else. Um, but got to put a different turbo on it. I ordered another Chinese turbo for it. So we'll be putting that on the next video. The video following that will be the dyno tune. So I'm going up for a tune in about a week and a half. So not this coming weekend, but the one after. So We'll be going up for a dyno tune. We'll get a power number. I've got a few tweaks I want to do to this thing while the, uh, before we go for the tune and while the turbo's off, I kind of want to go in there and just recheck the torque on all the head bolts, see if I can get the uh, left side one to stop leaking oil. It's not mixing anything, not burning coolant, not burning oil. Well, it's not burning oil from the head gasket, not mixing anything. It's just leaking around one of the oil drains on the edge of the head gasket, which is kind of, I guess it's kind of a, not an uncommon or unheard of thing on multi-layer steel gaskets, but um, if that's my only issue I'm having, I'm, I'm okay with that. And another cheap turbo isn't a big deal either, but that's going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and make sure you come back here in a video or two. We will have a dyno tune, and we will get a power number, and we'll finally get some, uh, some driving clips in. So that's going to be it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you all later.